Hey everybody, I'm Anna Hethmaker from Hethmaker Violins, and this is another one of our videos in our Student Stuck at Home series. Whether you're stuck at home because of the coronavirus or you're having snow days, for some reason you're doing digital learning at home, it is my hope that this will give you some things to learn about. So of course here at the violin shop, I'm called the bow queen because I do all the bow restoration and I love bows. And one of the things I wanna teach you about today is the grip on your bow. Now, you all have somewhere on your bow, down here, you have a combination of two things. You're gonna have a thumb leather and you're gonna have something here. There's several different kinds of grips. That's called a grip, by the way. And what a lot of you will have is silver. It's either silver or it's silver on top of copper, it's some kind of metal. And I want you to know that besides being kind of pretty and shiny, this has a really important function. The balance of your bow and the weight of your bow is a very precise thing. The maker works really hard to get it in a very particular place. And for the bow to work really well in your hand, this right here has to have a certain weight to it. What weight? Well, it just depends. It depends on the piece of wood. It depends on how dense it is. It depends on its elasticity and all this stuff. So makers, when they're making a bow, have an opportunity to put several different kinds of grip on there. And they usually let the wood itself tell them what kind of grip to put on. And of course, the train's gonna come by. If I was a fiddler, I would just launch into some Orange Blossom Special, but I'll save that for another time. <laughs> All right, so the silver grip is probably the most common. Um, it is normally the heaviest. We can do some little interesting things to alter the weight, but that grip is gonna be the heaviest, and you'll see that on a lot of bows. And it's pretty, but it's not my favorite. So um, I will say that the silver is not the only metal grip that you'll find sometimes. Sometimes on a really fancy bow or a gold-mounted bow, you'll see grips that are actually made with gold wire. This is literally the thinnest piece of wire. We wrap it around the stick over and over and over. It takes a lot more skill than you would think. And then of course we finish it with a thumb leather. Now, a lot of old English bows have what's called a whalebone grip on it. Now, the whalebone grip, this is actually true whalebone. Now, we don't use this anymore, how come? Well, because we don't believe in killing whales, they're beautiful. But, you know, 100, 150 years ago, they were killing whales and they used the bone to make these beautiful grips. They're usually like a tan and a black, and that is two strips of bone, two different colors. And working with real whale bone, it's kind of cool. I got to see it done once. It's actually quite brittle. And what you have to do is you have to drop it into boiling water and kind of like spaghetti, kind of cook it up. And then when it comes out, it gets soft and pliable and you have to wrap it quite quickly because as it cools, not only is it going to um, shrink up against the wood, but it's gonna become brittle. If you don't wrap it fast enough, you're gonna find yourself with a mess on your hands. And why did they use whalebone? Well, whalebone is really, really tough and strong. This whalebone right here is probably over 100 years old and it looks like the day it was made. It's just a really, really wonderful substance in terms of its use. Like I said, we don't use it anymore, but if you ever got a chance to study a really nice old English bow, a lot of them will have whalebone. Now, a lot of y'all will actually have what we call faux whalebone. Faux, F-A-U-X. Faux is um, the French word for fake. And we have lots of fake whalebone that we use. So if you have a striped grip that's black and white or tan and black, a lot of times that's a faux whalebone. And they're just, they're different plastics and um, they can be made to quite lovely and no animals were harmed with them. So you can see several whalebone down here. These are both fine, fine old bows. Now I mentioned that the silver was not my favorite. Let me tell you about my favorite. So my favorite is actually the lightest of the grips. So if you had a bow and the wood was pretty dense and pretty heavy, and you didn't wanna add a lot of weight, you would actually make a silk grip. So you see I have several different um, examples here. These are silk, it's like embroidery thread, just like if you were making some something embroidered, 
and you wrap it around the stick. You can do different patterns, you see. And silk comes in every color of the rainbow. So a lot of times people will use silk grips to kind of personalize their bow, to make it fun. If pink and purple are your favorite colors, you can do that. Now, these are fine old French bows. And it traditionally, you saw silk grips on the fine old French bows. They used a lot of silk. There's even a story floating around that a lot of the big workshops in France, they would employ lots of different bow makers, really amazing bow makers, but they didn't make the bow under their own name. And so instead, there is a story going around that says that they would have different patterns of silk and that you would know who was the bow maker by the pattern they used. I've never been able to verify if that's actually true or not. I think it's a very cool idea though. <laughs> this is silk and, and um, we call it gimp. Gimp is silk that's got actual silver wrapped on top of it. This is the same thing, but it's gimp, it's gold. Or some people call it tinsel also. So you see how vibrant and pretty it is. It's the black silk thread with a gold wrapped with it. This is my particular favorite. So your homework, so you got two extra credits today. The first thing I want you to do, go out, go get your bow and look at it and see what kind of grip do you have. Do you have metal? Do you have a faux whalebone? Or do you have silk on your bow? Um, and that's the first thing I want you to do. So your second, here's your fun extra credit for the day. This is a German bow by a maker by the name of Fretchner. And your extra credit is to learn how to spell Fretchner. P-F-R-E-T-Z-S-C-H-N-E-R. We had a staff meeting for our violin shop once a few years ago, and we had a spelling um, contest. And that was one of the things we all had to be able to spell was Fretchner. Fretchner is a great maker. And um, so go and Google Fretchner, learn to spell it, and learn about their bows. I hope you learned a little something today. I'm Anna Huthmaker with Huthmaker Violins, and I look forward to seeing you at the next video.